the Board of Governors uh, submitted proposal for 2014 that has $60 million allocated for football expansion. Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're passing the buck on that one. Not us. Uh, no, I don't know of any such item. The top priority for us for capital expansion on this campus is a new science building and uh, in terms of appropriation. And that building is in the budget for uh, funding for planning money in the second year of this biennium. Uh, after that, it's the renovation of the Burson building. And after that, it's the creation of a, a performance venue for uh, the College of Arts and Architecture. So we don't have any, uh, at least at the top end of our request for appropriation, anything related to athletics. And uh, those things, as Phil said, sometimes we are asked to put in uh, what are uh, construction items related to self-sustaining revenues. But uh, I think you all ought to count on a 15,000 uh, capacity stadium for quite a long time because that's probably what we're going to be able to, uh, to do. Uh, I should mention that number was picked uh, by me after we had had lots of consultations on campus and with other startup programs about how large a stadium should we be. If you looked at other football championship series programs or what used to be called 1AA, the uh, average attendance at those kinds of uh, conference um, games or games by those kinds of entities are around 7,500 people total. And we just thought we'd draw a larger number than that being in Charlotte and with sort of the fact that there's a, this pent up demand for football here. But we have to be sure we fill our stadium before we started thinking about expansion plans. Could you guys uh, please talk a little bit about your marketing strategy to reach out to some of the alums that maybe feel disconnected or haven't come back to campus in a long time? How are you going to get them excited about football? Well, I'm going to tell you, we've already reached out to them numerous times already when we first started this w with football. Uh, and we've spent a lot of time, we developed the, the website, uh, and, and most of the focus has been on, on selling FSLs and getting folks interested in that. Uh, but that's the primary thing we've done to date. I do think that the milestones we talked about a little bit earlier, when we have the groundbreaking uh, and when we name the coach, those things are going to make a huge difference. And, and when we get that coach in front of the community, including our alumni, uh, it will make a big difference. And, and certainly we hope the alums will come back for the groundbreaking, the ceremonial groundbreaking, and become more involved. My question um, really de deals with the way that some of the administrators and some students perceive football. Um, obviously, a lot of the students and um, staff in this room right now are in favor of football and want to hear what you guys have to say. But last week I was in a, um, a class from one of my majors and my professor said something along the lines of, we can't hire any more professors due to budget cuts, but you guys can go to football games. So what are you doing to kind of change the mentality of those who are disgruntled about football and disgruntled that students are having to pay for football even though that's what the students wanted? I would guess that in any university community, even on those with very successful football programs, you'll have a debate uh, among members of the faculty, staff, and even the student body about whether it's worth the cost and the other things associated with a major football program. And that's probably no different here. Uh, it was uh, my judgment after a long period of study uh, and relying upon the work done by the Everett Committee and, and others and after long consultations and looking at the analysis myself and what it really cost that it was going to be something we ought to do. But with that said, it is not a direct trade-off. There are trade-offs, but it is not a direct trade-off between hiring professors and hiring offensive guards. Uh, the, the faculty is paid out of our appropriation and our tuition revenue and football is paid out of a combination of student fees, private gifts, and uh, private dollars that come through ticket sales and concessions and the like. So uh, there's no question that if you charge students a football fee, whether it's for building the facility or operating it, that it could come at the expense of charging them tuition, which might support your academic mission. But we had those conversations three years ago. And uh, you know, ultimately, our trustees by unanimous vote, the Board of Governors by unanimous vote, uh, and I think uh, the, the general sense on campus was that this was something we needed to do, not so much for next year. I mean, we all know we're in a recession, but for 25 years from now, that 
if we're going to start football, and I think the consensus here was that we should, we're never going to start it cheaper than we could right now. And it, it would only grow more expensive with time. But with that said, as Judy said, we did budget conservatively. We didn't say we would start a marching band. We didn't say we would try to uh, do all the Title IX things all at once. Uh, we've kept the stadium at 15,000, and we'll see if we can fill it, and other things. We're not just leaping ahead on the notion that we're going to be able to play the Virginia Tech uh, team every single, every single week. And I think Judy's sense about this is the right sense. We're going we're to walk, we're going to crawl before we walk, we're going to walk before we run, uh, and we'll see what kind of fan and other support we can, we can develop for that. Uh, there's no question that this budget recession is going to hit the academic, the student services, and the administration of this institution hard, but that would be true even if we didn't have football. This is uh, from the live chat here online at charlotte49ers.com. The question comes from Matthew. How will the tailgating experience be based considering all the parking decks that are around the campus? Where's our tailgating? Well, I, I'll answer it, and Michelle, if I'm not doing it do justice, you can come up and, and answer it. Uh, that is under study right now. Uh, we have a number of surface lots, and, and that is most of the time where you are going to be able to utilize grills and things. Uh, but there are other tailgate other tailgating can occur in the decks. You just cannot use uh, propane and, and grills in that. So uh, we're going to maximize the use that we can on campus. Uh, people do need to realize, and this is where we get to managing expectations, uh, every part of this campus is open game from where something can be done, and you may have to walk to the stadium from there. Uh, if you've been to football games on any campus, that's what it is. It's not the convenience that we've all been spoiled by on this campus. So uh, it, it's a work in progress. We're trying to identify who goes where for those various uh, tailgating opportunities. I was also going to add that we're trying to look at tailgating and not just um, surface lots because many of you may have tailgated on other campuses or other sporting events where people may also tailgate in areas of campus and we think that may be um, appealing to a lot of our students as well and so we're looking at tailgating as surface lot spaces and then also with the parking decks um, with limitations for safety reasons like grills um, but then also to look at areas of campus because we think that will be appealing for people as well so looking at it from a total um, package but people are going to have to walk um, and I think that's part of the football experience as well is to walk across campus um, to the game but it is a work in progress. Uh, I should say that we've opened the parking lot at the Chancellor's residence to tailgating and I like brats a lot so uh, 